Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I wish I had a real witness in the house today. God has truly shown himself once again to be a faithful God, to be a good God, to be a great God, to be a gracious God, to be a loving God. And so just because he is our God, we ought to give him praise we ought to give him honor. We ought to give him glory. Because he is worthy. Our God is worthy of all praise. He's worthy of all praise. Even in a dark hour, our God is worthy of all praise. In a dark and dying season, our God is worthy of all praise. My brothers and sisters, on today, we're going to give God praise in spite of and because of who he is and who we are because our God deserves our praise. If you will stand with me now for our call to worship, our call to worship is coming from the 37th Division of Psalms. David said, David said, trust in the Lord and do good. Then you will live safely in the land and prosper. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you your heart's desires. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him and he will help you. He will make your innocence radiate like the dawn and the justice of your cause will shine like the new day sun. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of our God shall last forever. My brothers and sisters, if you would have a seat for a moment. And I want to be real with you all today because my heart is heavy. My heart is very heavy. I got a phone call early this morning, one of those calls that a pastor, we often expect and wait for but we're never prepared for, but they come. It was about 2.53 this morning, and one of the members of the Progressive Church called me, and she was crying, 
And she said, Pastor, I'm losing my daughter. It was our dear sister Janice Hardeman. Her 15-year-old daughter, Jackson, was killed this morning, Lord, last night. I went to Wesley Hospital and I watched poor Jackson lay there in the hospital. And I watched the doctors and the nurses do all that they could until it got to the point that they couldn't do nothing else. And I saw Janice make the hardest decision she ever had to make. She had to let her little daughter go. I saw Jan uh, Jackson's dad make the hardest decision he ever had to make to let his little daughter go. My brothers and sisters, I just read to you what David said, that we ought to trust in the Lord. I was troubled all day yesterday with this sermon that God had laid on my heart from the book of Revelations, chapter 4. And the direction God had put it, had steered me in, it just troubled me, and I was wondering why, and I thought that it was because of what took place down in Uvalde, Texas. Because each and every time I would see the testimony of those little children that were involved and survived and how they talked about their friends that didn't, it brought tears to my eyes. It is so much death in this country. So many children are losing their lives. It is so much sense, senseless death in this country. And, you know, it's not the police. It is us killing us, black, white, Hispanic, Asian. Indigenous. We're killing each other. Little Jackson died on her way home. Her mother heard shots. You know, Janice lived right two, that, two houses down. Jackson was at a party right down the street. Janice heard the shots and she texted her daughter, said, Jackson, you need to come home. Jackson said, Mama, I'm on my way. She died right outside the church. I thought I was preparing a sermon and the majority of my sermon was about all these little kids dying down in Texas and the other adults and others that died over in Buffalo, New York, and the church shooting out in California, and all of the other senseless killings that we don't have places that our kids can play in their front yard or even walk down the street. And not just kids, but all of us, none of us can feel safe. You can't go to the grocery store and feel safe. My brothers and sisters, it's not time to be playing Christian. It's not time to be playing church. I sent out a blessed morning prayer this morning talking about your faith. This is the time that your faith has to be strong. I saw a mother and a father early this morning. Janice couldn't stop crying. Last thing she said, she said, she was almost home, Pastor. I said, well, Janice, she's at home now for real. Yeah. Fifteen years old. 
another mother and father will not experience the joy of watching their daughter graduate high school or college or see what her goals and dreams would be or fulfilled. Just like those 19 families down there will not see their little kids and enjoy them. My brothers and sisters, it's time out. It's time out for us gathering Sunday after Sunday and praising a God and then hating one another. It's time out for us letting the things that divide us, the denominations and all of this other mess, because Satan is using it against us. The world is seeing how divided the church is. And they say, why should we even waste our time? going to a church and believing in a God that those that say they have faith are hating on one another. I thought back to what Lady Fern said a few Sundays ago when she said, please don't call me First Lady because I'm not nobody important. See, it's time out for us wearing all of the big eyes and little U's. And that's why we don't have presidents around here. And I've told y'all before, don't call me reverend because there's only one to be reverence. I wish y'all would hear me today. I've told you before, you can call me Buck and I'm happy. Because I'm, I'm, I'm pressing towards the time when he say servant. Servant well done. My brothers and sisters, we have to get to the point that we are the church, that we are the living word of God. During this weekend, and you know this Memorial Day weekend will never be the same for Sister Janice Hardeman again. She will never celebrate it again the way she may have in the past nor would uh, Jackson's father. It's time out for playing church. It's time out. We have more in common than we have different. And the things that we allow to separate us are the things that is killing us and killing our children. I told y'all I've been in that diversity panel over at WSU and the, and the WPD uh, Crime Prevention Center or Training Center for almost a month now. And the common theme of almost in every group, because we've been meeting with every police officer from captain on down every week and you know the one thing that all of them agree that they need SROs in middle school and elementary schools, not just high schools, but they need their presence and police need to be getting out of their cars and make themselves familiar in the neighborhoods. And I want to say this real clear, and I'm standing up, even though I don't feel like it, my knees hurt, my back hurt, and everything else hurt, but I'm standing up because I want y'all to hear me clearly here in the presence and on social media. We need to stop using the police as a discipline tool, telling our children, don't you touch them, don't you say nothing to them, or they'll put you in jail. It ain't right. Our police officers are out there to serve and to protect and to do a job. They are not our enemy. Stop making them the enemy. Or they'll grow up thinking that they are, the children thinking that they are, and they'll grow up hating them just like we got a group of children, teenagers out there now. 
thinking that the police are their enemies and that nobody cares for them. The majority of our gang members and others out there now, they think nobody cares for them. That's why they care for nobody. They hit that little girl Jackson and kept on going with no care and no concern. They shot up. They shot at innocent people with no care and no concern. That young man down in Texas went into an elementary school. Ten-year-old children ain't never did nobody no harm. And just a hundred rounds and just started killing those little kids. Don't y'all know that's evil? That's evil. And it ain't all mental health. That's evil. That's evil. We got to stop putting blame and pointing blame where you don't know where the blame is. Call it what it is. It's straight evil and sin. Satan is on his job. He is seeking whom he may devour. He's like a roaring lion. He's trying to steal, kill, and destroy. He's coming after the family of God. He wants to destroy us. Don't think just because you've been in church for 30 or 40 years that you're, sa that, that you're safe from his attack. Because he'll come after your children, your grandchildren. He'll, he'll sneak in any crack that he can. Anybody. He'll use your spouse. He'll use your daughter, your son, your son-in-law, your daughter-in-law, your niece, your nephew. He'll use anybody he can. My brothers and sisters, we got to be better than that. United, united, we can do anything but separate it. A house divided, come on, help me, somebody, is in your Bible. A house divided cannot stand. But when we come together, it's in your Bible. When we come together touching and agreeing on any one thing, Jesus said, I'll be in the midst. If we have the faith the size of a mustard seed, we can speak to any mountain, any mountain, and it shall be removed. Well, let me help somebody in the room today. This thing that we're facing right now is a mountain. The killings of these young people, and look, y'all know who they are. I'm speaking to somebody right now, whether you're in the room or on social media, you know them. Somebody in your family, some young person in your family or somewhere connected to you, a part of the Crips, Bloods, or some gang. Somebody probably was involved in that shooting last night. Somebody, because they're still looking for him. See, I also have heard them say in that panel, and y'all know me, I'm not going to sit in a room and be quiet. I've let everybody from the district attorney to the mayor to the city manager, don't invite me if you don't want to hear me. 
Because I'm not going to be silent. See, I believe when we created to see something, say something, it wasn't just for the community. I tell the police officers too, if you see something or say something around 2727 East, 25th Street, you better come let me know. Because if there's a drug deal or a, a drug house or something else around here, I want to know about it. Because we want to shut it down because we don't want it over here in our neighborhood. I told, I told the police officer, I want to know what's going on around my church. Because I declare the blood of Jesus on this property right here. And anybody, I let them know this is holy and blessed ground. I'm tired of it. We got to bury a 15-year-old daughter of this church. And if it don't break your heart. My brothers and sisters. Verse 5 of our call of worship said, Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him. And he will help you. You got to believe that. You got to believe that. See, thank you. I believe too often, leave it up there, don't take it down. I believe too often, we just skim over the word. David said, Lord, your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Because it's against you and you alone that I have sinned. I wish y'all would hear me today. See, I didn't come to entertain you today. I've been up since 3 o'clock this morning. And I can still hear Janice's cries. Her daughter was almost home. And now she's gone. She said, Pastor, my baby is gone. My baby is gone. She'll never hear her voice again. She's gone. What is it going to take for us to be what God has called us to be? It's time out for us being silent. I know that your, your, I know that your nephews and they your cousins and all of this but look at here and I told the police when I, stand, when I sit before them and stand I'm a convicted felon I don't blame the police for my felony I did the crime and so I did the time if they big enough and bad enough to pull a gun and go out and shoot at somebody then they big enough and bad enough to do the time Stop making excuses for them. You ain't helping them. You are not helping them by making excuses for them and hiding them. By saying, my baby is, oh, he was so sweet when he was born. He was so sweet when he was young. Well, look what he is now. And I tell you, and I'm being as real and transparent as I can be right now. Mother Lewis, I'd rather see them in jail than stretched out and crossed in front of here. I'd rather see them in jail because there, at least they have to listen. They won't be out here killing nobody. I wish y'all would heal me today. See, our scripture today, put it up, Revelation 4. And we're going to pray today, but I need to talk to y'all today. Because this is heavy on my heart. The deacons are going to put the uh, 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 offering baskets on the tables. And you can bring your offerings and you can put it up in the basket anytime uh, 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 during the service. That'll be fine. But I need to talk to y'all today. Because my heart is heavy. And it's time out for doing things as usual 
Because one thing for sure, if you keep on doing what you've been doing, you're going to keep on getting what you've been getting. And I'm tired of getting what we've been getting. Because we keep on getting killed. And the church is constantly being put ashamed. And I'm like Paul. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I go into a dope house, a whole house, and any other kind of house. And I let them know what thus saith the Lord. I'm not afraid. Because if I die, I'm going to die on the battlefield of the Lord. I'm not afraid. I've been in gunfights and knife fights. I've seen others killed. I know what. I put my hand on little Jackson's head. One eye was swollen and bruised closed. And one eye was still halfway open. I put my hand on it and closed the other eye. And blessed her and said, Lord, please receive your daughter into, her, into your kingdom. Give her rest now, Lord. It just broke my heart. Her face was all battered and bruised. Oh, Lord, help. Lord, help. After John talked to the three churches, and we've talked about it before, what he said to the three churches. And after each one of them, it said, let them that have an ear hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. It still rings true. Dr. Lewis, we've got to hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches today. And it's not to the buildings. The church of God. The ecclesia of God is living and is breathing and is each and every one of us. We are the churches of God. Chapter 4. It says, John says, Then as I looked, I saw a door standing open in heaven. And the same voice I had heard before spoke to me like a trumpet blast the voice said come up here and I will show you what must happen after this and instantly I was in the spirit and I saw a throne in heaven and someone sitting on it the one sitting on the throne was, a, was as brilliant as a gemstone, like Jasper and, and the glow of the emerald circle circled his throne like a rainbow. 24 thrones surrounded him and 24 elders sat on them. They were all clothed in white and had gold crowns on their head. From the throne came flashes of lightning and the rumble of thunder. And in front of the throne were seven torches with burning flames. This is the sevenfold spirit of God. And in front of the thrones was a shiny sea of glass, sparkling like crystal. In the center and around the thrones were four living beings, each covered with eyes, front and back. The first of these living beings were like lions, and the second was like an ox, and the third had, had a human face, and the fourth was like an eagle in flight. Each of these living beings had six wings, and their wings was covered all over with eyes, inside and out. Day after day and night after night, they kept saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God, the Almighty, the one who always was, who is, and who is still to come. 
Whenever the living beings give glory and honor and thanks to the one sitting on the throne, the one who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fell down and worshiped the one sitting on the throne, the one who lives forever and ever, and they laid their crowns before the throne and say, you are worthy, O Lord our God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things and they exist because you created what you pleased. Our God is worthy of all praise. Even in this hour, in this season of death and darkness and devastation, and destruction he is still worthy of all praise I was prepared to talk about how John was caught up and sent to heaven in the spirit and how the one Jesus spoke to him and said, come up here. Oh, chills. I, when I think about it, I mean, Jesus said, come up here, John. Brought him from earth to heaven. And said, let me tell you about what's going to happen next. I said, Lord, I wish I can come right now because I want to know what's going to happen next. Because my heart is hurting. And I know healing comes after the hurt. But it's so much hurt. It's so much pain. It's so much darkness. Lord, I'm ready for your healing. He said, come up here. So I can tell you. What's going to happen next. I was prepared. Dr. Lewis, I was prepared to tell you about how Jesus, the one sitting on the throne, was shining like brand new diamonds and jasper, red as rubies. And the throne was all covered like rainbows and emeralds, green, and it was beautiful. And John was just caught up and it was it was just a sight to behold. I was prepared to tell you about how the other 24 thrones that was around him and all the creatures actually were angels sitting on the thrones and how they were worshiping him and praising him and how they were constantly shouting holy, holy, holy. My brothers and sisters, I believe if we praise more, it's in your bulletin. If we, if, if we worry less and praise more, even when it hurts, Stanley, I believe if we praise even when it hurts, how God will inhabit it. We have to praise more. I was all prepared to tell you about how the spirit of the living God, when we talk about the seven lampstands and how we talk about the spirit of the living God was present and how it was a sevenfold spirit. And then he kept taking me to Uvalde and all of those little children. And I was wondering why. Lord why. So much death. Lord. Why the little children. Innocent children. And then. Then. It's like. Where's your faith? I know, I know what the word says. I know what the word says that 
the testing of our faith. Come on, help me somebody. The, the testing of our faith, it produces something in us. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. For by the elders obtained a good reputation. Is it the same elders that were there on the thrones? Is it just the elders of the church? I think it's all the elders. It's us as well as them. Our faith has to sustain us. Come on, help me somebody. In times like these, it's our faith that will sustain us. Because we walk by faith and not by sight. Because the things that we see, y'all come on, be real with me today. Mother Bagnell, the things that we see will crush us. What I saw this morning crushed me. It made me want to get in my bed and not get back out. I'm being real today. It crushed me. I can still hear Janice's voice and feel her tears on my shoulder. We walk by faith. And not by sight. Because what we see in this world today is evil. And see, what Satan wants us to believe is that he's winning. I wish y'all would hear me today. What Satan wants us to believe is that he is winning. Because every time we turn on the television, the media is constantly feeding us. I heard my wife say the other day, after the shooting down in Texas, they keep on. They keep on. Digging at the families. Asking the families more and more. But you know what I heard? Not just from a pastor down there. But from the family, I want my baby's voice to be heard. That's faith. I want her voice to be heard. We might not ever hear her little voice again. But we're going to continue to speak for her. And we want the world to know she was only 10 years old. But we want her voice to be heard. My brothers and sisters, that's what we have to do as a church body. As the body of Christ, we have to speak for the voiceless. We have to be there for the weak. I wish y'all would hear me today. Because faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Do y'all hear me today? By the word of God. Because the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. It will cut going and coming. And I don't care what the world may do. We've got to continue to stand on the word of God. And continue to be his representatives. Especially in this dark hour. Especially in this dark hour. To the least and the lost. Because let's be real. Our young people out there. That is doing all this senseless killing. Are lost. There's a song out right now. By a young man. And he testifies. That he had been in jail. A couple, two or three times. And that on the last time, he got saved. Because somebody testified to him about Jesus Christ. And said, if you really want to be successful, 
you need to bring Jesus in your life. And ever since he's been singing for Jesus, it's one of the number one songs out there now on the gospel charts. See, I'm a living witness and I will, I'm a living testimony that when you turn your life over to Jesus, you'll never be the same again. Come on, help me somebody. My brothers and sisters, maybe that's what James meant when he says that we ought to count it all joy when you fall into various trials knowing that the testing oh help me right now Holy Spirit the testing of faith produces patience but let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete lacking nothing see it does not say we won't have some bad days. It does not say we won't have some heartache and some pain. But how many of you know that every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before? Sister Brenda, you know what I felt? This morning when I was with Brenda, with uh, uh, Janice and, uh, and the daddy, because the one thing I heard from both of them is their faith. I heard both of them while we prayed and as they laid and put hands on their daughter and cried on their daughter and over their daughter, they both thanked God. And gave glory to God. They didn't curse God. I wish y'all would hear me today. They were in their tears. And in their pain. They still praised God. I wish y'all would hear me. Their faith. Still showed. In the midst. Of their pain. Will we praise him in our pain? Through our pain? My brothers and sisters, as we look at Psalm 37, put Psalm 37 up there and start at verse 1 for me. Because see, this is where we have to be at right now. Because if we are going to get to the point and the place that we have to be, David said, don't worry about the wicked or envy those who do wrong. Are y'all with me? He says, for, verse 2 says, for they shall soon, I wish y'all would pray with me right here. They shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. See, our God is great. Our, our call to worship says, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Verse 7. I want to read verse 7, 8 and 9. And this is for us. I know it's for me. He says, Rest, come on, help me, Holy Spirit. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prosper in his way. Because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger. And forsake raft. Do not fret 
it only causes harm. For evil doors shall be cut off. But those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. How y'all with me today? I'm almost done. And we're going to pray. We're going to pray today. I want to read verses 12 through 15 now. Verse 12 says, The wicked plots against the just and gnashes at him with his teeth. The Lord laughs at him. Did y'all hear me? The Lord laughs at him. For he sees that his day is coming. The wicked have donned the sword and have bent their, bo their bow the to cast down the poor and needy to slay those who are of upright conduct. Their sword shall enter their own hearts. And their, bow, their bows shall be broken. Verse 18 through 20. The Lord knows the days of the upright and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. And in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. But, somebody say but. The wicked shall perish. And the enemies of the Lord, like the splendor of the meadows, shall vanish. Into smoke they shall vanish away. Verses 23 through 26 says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way though he fall he shall not be utterly cast down for the Lord upholds him with his hand I have been young and now I am old yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken nor his descendants begging bread he is ever merciful and lands and his descendants are blessed I'm going to end with verse 34 wait on the Lord and keep his way and he shall exalt you to inherit the land when the wicked are cut off you shall see it I'm sorry I'm sorry I got two more verses 39 and 40 but the salvation of the righteous is from the Lord he is their strength in the time of trouble and the Lord shall help them and deliver them he shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. Amen. My brothers and sisters, though my heart is heavy, and I'm going to be honest right here, Gene, I am mad as hell. I am mad as, I am Jesus mad right now. I am as mad as Jesus was when he went into the temple and turned over tables and got a whip and shot whip. Oh, Lord, help me right here. But I remember my Bible and the words of my God where he says, do not repay evil. Somebody help me. He said, vengeance is mine. I will repay so instead, I will trust in the Lord to handle his business. What I will do, and I pray that you will join me, is that we're going to comfort and be beside Janice and her family. 
and each other. We're going to continue to be a light on this corner for this community. Let them know that we are not just inside the walls, but we are outside the walls. We're going to walk across the street next weekend. We're going to continue to knock on doors and let them know that we are the church following Jesus Christ, the maker. And if anybody that don't know him in the pardoning of their sins, we're going to make way for them to know him. And I don't care what nobody says about me. I am on the Lord's side. I am called by Jesus Christ for such a time as this. I will not bow down. I will not bend and I will not break. And until I am laid out in front of him, I'm going to preach his word to the least and the lost. I'm going to help those in prison coming out of prison. I'm going to do my best to stop them from going into prison. I'm going to talk to the police, the sheriff, the mayor, the DA, and anybody else. I'm going to go into every house I can. And I don't care what it is labeled. I'm going. I'm not scared. I'm going to do what I have to do. I told somebody. I told my family. Because you know they put out death threats. On the mayor. City council member. And others. And the interim chief about the. Search for the new police chief. I'm letting y'all know and social media and all. I'm on the committee searching for a new police chief. They gonna make it public here soon. I'm not scared. I'm not scared. Cause I'm gonna do the best I can for the city of Wichita. So that my grandchildren, your grandchildren, your children, and your children's children can be able to walk the streets, can go to a party, can come home from that party, can go home. I wish y'all would hear me today. I'm going to do whatever I can to make Wichita a safe community and a safe city. And if I have to die doing it, I want y'all to do as Martin Luther King said, when they lay me down, I want somebody, whoever stands up over me, to say that I did the best I can to let somebody know that there is a reality in serving a true and living God. I thank God for where he brought me from and what he is doing for me right now. So my brothers and sisters, as we get ready to pray, again, if you have your tithe and offering, G, if you want an usher to come and receive your offering, an usher will stand or a deacons will stand and they will come and get it, I want us to pray. Steve is going to play some music, some soft music, but we're going to pray. I'm going to pray. I want you all to pray. I want you to pray out loud. We're going to pray for Janice. We're going to pray for the ones down in Texas, the ones in Buffalo. We're going to pray for our country, for our city, for our community. We're going to pray. And look, if you got to leave, you can leave, but we're going to pray, and we're going to pray some more. If somebody feel like coming and get the mic and pray, you can come get the mic and pray. Again, uh, ushers, if you see somebody raising up their hand, raising up their envelope, please come get it and bring it, bring it to the front. Uh, uh, somebody, effort, get up, help somebody. Another usher, get up, help somebody. Uh, 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 anybody, if you close by somebody, get up and help them. Uh, 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 bring it. We're going to pray for Deacon Finney. Amen. Because uh, uh, he's not feeling good.
My brothers and sisters, again, it's time out for playing church. It's time out for church as usual. It's time out for life as usual. If we ain't learned nothing else during this pandemic season, everything changes, life changes, the days change. Today is not like yesterday, and tomorrow is not going to be like today. Things change, life changes. We have to be ready for change. And if we're going to be changed, be a change, we have to be changed. And we have to be the change. I thank God, I thank God for who he is and whose we are. We are the people of God, the children of God. God has brought us through so much. I look at Brother Gerald Norwood and the Arise Choir up there in Washington, D.C. They were with Reverend Jackson Jackson. I think we got some pictures. They may flash them on the screen. And they were up there on their way. They're singing up in Washington, D.C. right now. Again, we've come so far. But we still have so much farther to go. Life is not over. Let us not get satisfied. Let us not get complacent. Let us always continue to seek. The Bible says, the Bible says, to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all of those other things will be added unto us. It didn't say to stop seeking. When you seek something, it's a continuous action. We must continue to seek. Don't think just because your name is on progressive roll and it might be signed in the book of life in heaven that you're done. Come on, help me somebody. We have to continue. Because the world is changing, life is changing, things are changing. Tomorrow it might be you and your family. So as we get ready to pray, I invite you, I invite you to pray. Pray with us and for us this Memorial Day weekend as we remember those that have gone on before us, not just in the military, but all those that have gone on before us, those that have blazed the trail, that have shedded blood and sweat and tears. I was talking to the police and I remembered, cause you know, they always say what they would never do I had a cousin, he was about 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, weighed close to 300 pounds. One time he got into an altercation with the police. The next thing we know, we hear he hung himself in a jail cell by his belt. He never wore a belt. This was back in the 70s, and we just had to live with that. And I told them there's a history there that has created a gap between the police department and community. And it's a gap, it's a deep gap, it's a wide gap. But it's a gap that can be closed, it is closing, but it's, it's a gap that has to be acknowledged and realized and a gap that both sides have to accept. There is a gap, especially between African Americans and the police department. There's a gap, but we can't just live in the past. I wish y'all would hear me today. We can't live. That's the problem with a lot of our young people now. A lot of them wasn't even born, but because what has been passed down to them. Help me, somebody. What has been, the hate has been passed down to them. We have to change the conversation. We have to teach our children. That's why I say, I, I talk to my little three-year-old grandson because they look at the police and say, all they're going to do is arrest us and shoot us. So we have to change the conversation. 
We have to change it. We have to stop the hate. It only harms. Hate only harms. And a lot of times it harms the ones with the hate more than the ones that you're hating on. We, get, we have to be in a mindset of, pray, of prayer. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul. And let all that is within me bless his holy name. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul. And let all that is within me bless his holy name. I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord. No tender voice like thine can be. I need the oh, I need the Sisters, there's others on our prayer list, and I know you have some that you want to pray for as well. Again, the mic is open as I lead us off in prayer, and we'll come at the end and we'll pray for benediction. Deacons, you can be seated. We're going to bless the offering as well. And deacons, if you are led to pray, you can pray as well. But deacons, you can be seated. Deacons, Lonnie and G, you can be seated. Amen. But I want us to be in the mindset of prayer. Our Father and our God, we come. Lord God, we come with heavy hearts. But Lord God, we still come grateful and thankful. For we realize, Lord God, that we are blessed. For Lord God, you are a gracious God. You are a merciful God. And though, Lord God, we may have tears in our eyes and even in our hearts, we still thank you for being our God. Lord God, there is so much hurt and pain in this world. There's so much death and devastation so much division, destruction. But Lord God, we know you are a God of revival and restoration, renewal. So God, we're coming unto thee. For as we look at the mountains in our lives, we know where our help comes from. All of our help comes from you. You are the God that never slumbers nor sleeps. You will deliver us. You will save us. You've done it in days gone by. You've done it through generations and generations. You delivered the people from captives, the people of Israel, 
You've done it, Lord. You've shown your hand of power throughout the Bible. And then even in our own lives, when doctors and situations have come upon us and we thought that there was no way out, when our hearts and our minds could not conceive a way out. Lord God, you showed yourself to be the way maker. Lord, we say thank you. And Lord, we will be so bold to say, Lord, do it again. Do it again, Lord. Let your spirit fall afresh. First of all, in this house called Progressive, one of our children you called home, Lil Jackson Hunt, 15 years old, a baby. You've called her from her mother's bosom, her father's arms. Lord God, we don't know the reason why and we dare not even question but Lord you saw fit we are like Jesus now in the garden and say Lord God thy will be done not our will but thy will has been done and we submit to your will but now Lord we lift up Janice now to you and ask, Lord, that you give her a comfort and a strength and a peace that surpasses all understanding. Lord God, I, I know you can and I believe that you will. Wrap your loving arms around her right now. Dry her weeping eyes late in the midnight hour when she's laying all by herself and nobody else is around and the tears won't stop falling not only her but the father as well lord in his strength he's weak show him that in his weakness you are his strength comfort them lord and even and Jackson's brother Zion touch him right now touch Lord Jesus as only you can all of the family surround them with your love spirit of the living God fall afresh upon them and then Lord God prepare us right now as her church family to put our loving arms around her to be for her, Lord, what you would have us to be. To meet her needs, Lord, as we can. To do for her whatever we can. Lord God, I thank you. And then, Lord, we lift up those families down in Texas. Of those 19 little babies. And then, Lord God, of those two teachers. And, Lord God, we even heard that one of the teacher's husband even had a heart attack and died. Now their four children are without a mother and a father. So much death, so much hurt. But Lord God, you told us last week that before the hurt, after the hurt comes the healing. Heal as you see fit in your great time for you are Jehovah Rapha. You are the great healer. This world needs a healing. This world has so much hurt and pain. Lord God, thank you for being God. We know that you work all things together for the good. Lord, work it. Work it, Lord God, for your benefit. Work it, Lord God, for your glory. For your glory, Lord. Lord, I ask you in the name of Jesus, every church that's open in your name, that is about your business, bring us together, unify us, Lord, with one voice and one mission, Lord God.
God, on one accord, that Lord God, we will speak for your people. Do your will according to your word. No other word, Lord. According to your word, no tradition, no denomination, but your word and your word alone. Oh, Lord. Lord God, we need you. We need you right now, Lord God. Let us put ministry over money. Let us put lives over everything else. Nothing else matters. Lord God, we need you. We need you right now. We need you more than titles and positions. We want to be servants. Servants of the Most High God. Use us, Lord God. The young and the old, use us, Lord God. Let everyone take up at our cross and follow you. Every one of us. And we ask this. We ask this. And he that said, greater works will you do than I. Because I go to the Father. We ask this in his name. He that said, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself. Pick up his cross daily and follow me. We ask it in his name. The name that is above every name. That one day, at the mentioning of his name, every knee shall bow on earth above the earth and under the earth and every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord is in Jesus name we pray and we said amen Don't be discouraged. Joy comes in the morning. Weepy may endure. Know that God is nigh. Stand still and look up. God is going to show up. He is stand, standing by. There's healing for your sorrow. There's healing for your pain. Healing for your spirit. There's shelter from the rain Lord send your healing for this we know there is there is there is mom in Gilead oh thank you Lord to heal the soul. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Pray, I, Mother. Our Father, Almighty God, mm. 
Father, we come before you this morning. Father, we have heavy hearts. But Father, we know that whatever's happening, you allowed it. And you'll work it out for your good. But Father, in our little finite, my finite minds, right now we just don't understand, Father. But Father, we will continue to lift you up and to praise you, for we know mm, 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 that Jesus and you are our load carers and our load bearers. So Father, we just look to you, Father, when these dark days are up on us. I sat in my house the other day, and I thought about all those little babies. What, the oldest probably about 10 years old. And I thought about how me, being 84 years old, if somebody walks in with a gun and starts shooting, I know those little babies were scared to death. And then when I heard the Father God, that the policeman stood out there in that hallway while it was happening, Father, I couldn't imagine. But Father, we just have to just keep holding to your hand, Father. But we know these are, we're coming from the last days. And we're fooling ourselves if we think it's going to get better. It's, it's not going to get better. It's not going to get any better. But we're just going to have to keep trusting in you, Father God. Just keep trusting in you, Father oh, God. Yes. And Father, I just ask this. Those bereaved, Janice and all those down in Texas, let them feel in the power of your comfort. Father, I've been there. I've been there. And I know that if you concentrate on it hard enough, you can feel the, actually feel the power of God's comfort. Your child won't be there, but you can feel the power of God's, God's comfort. So Father, I thank you for that comfort. And I pray that each and every one of those parents and Janice, that you would allow them to feel it. Not to be so shut up and so hurt because, and start concentrate how they gonna get over it. Father, let them know they have to depend on you, Father God. That's the only way they are gonna get past it, is to depend on you. They would have to do it you with you or the worldly way. And prayerfully, prayerfully, Father, they will lean and depend on you. Because they and let you let you know, let them know that all they have to do is say, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. Oh, yes. No other oh, help yes. I know. Oh, yes. And that you will grab hold to it, Father God. So Father God, I just lift Janice up right now, Father God. I just lift her up to you. Father, that you would just put your arms around her. Put your arms around her, Father. And let her feel it and let her feel our love father god she knows she has a church family that love her so let her feel our love father god and father strengthen us don't let us fall apart this is not the time for christians to fall apart yes i'm standing here crying because my heart is heavy but we have got to stand strong you know we have got to stand strong because like i said before we're coming up on the last days and it's not going to get any better so, Father, give us the faith, the strength, and the courage that we need, Father God, and because we, we know we can depend on you. So, Father, I thank you for these few minutes, and I honor you, Father God, and I know you will take care of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just praise you, just glorify you, Lord. Oh, yes. Thank you for being who you are. Thank you for what you have done. And thank you for what you're going to do. And thank you, Lord, that when Jesus went to the cross, he gave his life for each and every person on this earth. Those that went on before us, those that's here, and even those that's coming. So I thank you and I praise you this day. And Father, I was just sitting there thinking, back some years ago, you had me to go and buy a great big bottle of uh, olive oil. And I shared this with some people. I never did really understand it. I was just being obedient what you said. So you told me to drive to uh, the I-35, just as I go under the bridge, stop, park the car get out and take that oil. And I had prayed over it for a month or two. 
some other people to pray that was strong in faith in Christ. And one of the girls, lady went with me. She's gone on to be with the Lord. Now her name was uh, Faith. And so anyway, I parked the car and I pulled the oil, like you said, and I made a big long cross. I didn't know what it was for, but then you told me, you said, look to the north and pray for all the peoples in the north. Pray for all the peoples that's living in the south. Then you told me to look to the east and pray for all the peoples that were still living there. And I did. And you said, pray in, to the west. And I looked to the west and did the same. Then I stretched my hand up to you and I said, Lord, I've done what you told me to do. So I'm thinking today, you had me to bless the grounds because you, you had already blessed our grounds. We are already blessed. We just got to open our spiritual eyes and start looking and seeing. We see some of these children that's being grown up in these homes today. We are seeing them, but we just don't say anything. Sometimes we get afraid of our kids and we shouldn't get afraid. I raised seven and I know I taught mine. So I told them, hey, thou shall not kill. Thou shall love everybody. Thou shall love your neighbors. When you cut my sons and, and daughters when they come in the neighborhood, I said, hey, you're going to respect the elders. And I taught them to respect the elders. And I said, if you're playing your music loud and crazy, you better shut it down when you hit my neighborhood. And we stayed right down the street there. And when they got up here by Progressive Church, they shut that music down. And one of my old elder neighbors says, how do your children do what they do? I said, because I tell them. I don't whoop them and all that. I just taught them. I just taught them. So when we are raising these children up today, we have to look and see. If they, if they, uh, and, and they're teaching us now about the mental health. Mental health people is, was in the Bible. God been showing me that for a long time. And those mental health people are still here. When they got problems, they got problems. I got one that got problems, and she's my daughter. She's 54 years old. But she haven't gotten that far that I, I think to hurt people, but she sure is destroying herself. And I hate that. So I'm asking for, you have already blessed everybody. You've blessed the world. You've blessed, blessed us and with all spiritual gifts and with wisdom and knowledge. So I'm asking, Father God, if the ones, the children that's coming on today, those parents, if they could just put a little bit more love in those children and talk to them and bless them and help them, these things won't happen because they should be happening. We shouldn't be taking other people's children's life. We sh these children shouldn't be doing this, and it bothers me, but mine is all grown, but it bothers me to when I hear of that, and right now I'm shaking in my boots for Sister Janet. I know, hey, I, heard, I hate that. I've had a couple of, to go on to be with the Lord, but they didn't go from nothing like one of them did, but one of them just went just sick. But anyway, I could deal with that better than I could with the one that got killed. But I'm just saying, we need to bless our children. We need to bless them. We need to stop being so busy and turn around and bless our children. And I just thank you, Father, and I just praise you for your goodness and your mercy. Continue to help these children. Continue to help us to help them. Continue to help me to help my grandkids and continue to help me to stand strong and bold. I'm not afraid of any of them. And some of them is kind of messed up, but I'm not afraid. And I'm not going to be afraid. They're going to have to stop it in Jesus' name. Amen. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but that of power and of love and of a sound mind. And until the church stand up and be the church, until the church stands up and be the, and I'm not talking about brick and mortar. I'm talking about the ecclesia of God, the living, breathing church, you and I, until we stop playing church and be the church, be the gospel of Jesus Christ, show the love of God. Mm. Give me one more song, Steve. Father, oh, that's good. That's good. I shred.
our God is there for us. Deacon Lonnie, did you want to pray? Come on, sir. Come on, sir. I'd love to hear a prayer from you. Amen. Lord, I stretch my hand to thee. Mm. Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord. Oh, Master, we, we stretch our hands to you yes, this morning. Oh, Master, we, we come humbly in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord God, we praise you this morning. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Because no other help do we know. Oh, Lord, we ask you that you have mercy on us this morning. Father, you told us to humble ourselves and pray. And mess, we come seeking your face this morning. Father, forgive us of our sins this morning. Lord God, we, we realize, Father, that evil can have no victory. None. I mean, absolutely none, dear God. As long as you are present. Oh, Lord, we, we come lifting our hearts to you this morning is dear god for they are heavy our hearts are heavy and we're in pain this morning dear god and we ask that you would just have mercy on us for lord god you told us that we should not fear and we should not be dismayed oh lord like job of old He had lost hope, dear God. He, he was dismayed and discouraged. And Job surmised that life was brief, full of trouble and, and eventually death. But old Master, he, he was revived by the, with the hope of the resurrection of our, our Savior, dear God. He was revived by the thought of the, our Savior on the cross, Father. And oh, his glorious resurrection one day, Father, we, we can find hope through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And oh, Master, we know that we seem to be in a, in a world of turmoil, a world of destruction, dear God. But we know that you have conquered, you have conquered the world. <laughs> and we don't have to worry, dear God, we don't have to be dismayed. We can look to you, look to you in our hope and, and Father, we can move forward realizing that you are our God and that you have control of all things. Father, our heart is broken by the, by the death of little Jackson. Father, touch your mo mother and her father this morning, or this afternoon, if you would, Master, in the name of Jesus. Touch them, dear God. Comfort them. Comfort them as only you can. Father, comfort our pastor this morning, for his heart is heavy. But he knows that he can lift his heart to you. Father, comfort this congregation.